James Heydrich rose to fame for his self-claimed psychokinetic powers. This was until the amazing James Randi put him to the test which exposes his fraud. The amazing Randi! You have been touring our country, performing as a magician, but you have also been debunking psychics, haven't you? I have indeed. Would you explain to our audience why you devote so much time to this crusade of yours? Well, I'll tell you, Bob, I feel it's a very serious matter to be particularly raising a younger generation who are being led to believe by some incompetent and uh, not very bright, in some cases, magicians and uh, scientists at the same time, that there are such things as psychic powers. I've looked for it for a long time now, and I have not found anything in 35 years. And I think that particularly a younger generation being told that these things are real will not be raised in such a way that they can deal with a rational, logical, real world. And you have offered $10,000 to anyone who can perform a psychic feat. I have indeed, and I carry the check with me. I hope you have the check with you tonight. Heydrich became an overnight celebrity after appearing on a December 1980 taped broadcast of ABC's popular program, That's Incredible. He did it! That's incredible! Heydrich appeared to demonstrate for the viewing audience very strong psychokinetic powers. These powers enabled Heydrich to flip the pages of a telephone book without touching the book and cause a pencil to turn on a table merely by the power of his will. Abloid newspapers quickly ran an article on Heydrich, labeling him the world's top psychic. The glowing account labeled Heydrich's powers as incredible and staggering. Other newspapers revealed that Heydrich could cure headaches and colds with a touch and answer questions before they were asked. The scientist and electrical engineer from the University of Utah after much testing also concluded that Heydrich's psychic powers were indeed authentic. Heydrich claimed that he had learned these powers from special training in the martial arts and that he could teach these powers to anyone. Heydrich opened a popular and successful school where he professed to be able to teach psychokinetic powers. While Heydrich was fooling the gullible, he was not fooling magician and psychic investigator James Randi, claiming that Heydrich was simply blowing the page over, and he spun the pencil around by the same means. I don't accept it as a demonstration of psychic power, Bob. I think that the solution is rather simple. I think that Mr. Heydrich is merely, to accomplish this effect, blowing on both the page and on the pencil. I see. Now, you originally ask him to demonstrate in two different ways his psychic power. But as I understand it, you are now prepared to waive the demonstration with the pencil. Yes, and the reason is rather simple, because the pencil reacts to even the currents of the air conditioning in this studio. It would be very difficult to try to put controls on it in such a way that normal currents of air that are present all the time would not move the pencil. For example, it moves very, very easily. Brandy immediately offered Heydrich his prize of $10,000 for proof of one paranormal demonstration under proper conditions of observations. Heydrich accepted Randy's offer and agreed to be tested on the TV show, That's My Line. Now, these demonstrations, you did these same demonstrations on That's Incredible. Yes, I did. And as you know, the amazing Randy maintains that you did not use psychic power, but that it was trickery. Hmm. And he is prepared to pay you $10,000 if you can do it using psychic power. During a rehearsal practice session with Heydrich, the day before the actual taping, Randy had the session unknown to Heydrich, videotaped, with a highly sensitive microphone, aimed and focused at Heydrich's mouth, and with the amplifier turned up far beyond normal voice level. Randy's microphone recorded monumental blasts of air every time the page moved or the pencil turned. That when he was making that page move. He knew he was under the gun. He was being observed carefully. He would not wear a microphone. He wanted the overhead microphone, the boom microphone, to follow him around, pick up any sounds. With the microphone such as this around his neck, his gimmick might have been given away immediately. John Palmer, a member of the Parapsychological Association, and two UCLA scientists were called in as judges of Heydrich's abilities. The prize check was held by That's My Line host, Bob Barker, and was to be surrendered to the proper person at the close of the test. 
I would like to introduce our panel of judges. And our first judge here, Dr. John Palmer, is a psychologist and professor of parapsychology at John F. Kennedy University. Let's see right there, Dr. Palmer. We have Dr. Stephen Drake, astronomer and expert on stellar evolution at UCLA. And our third judge is Dr. Ronald Markman, assistant clinical professor of psychiatry at USC. Randy Simple, the controlled test, involved emptying a small can of styrofoam particles around the open book. In this way, any blowing would show up as a massive movement of the particles. In case Hydra claimed that his power could not differentiate between the pages of the book and the styrofoam particles, Randy was prepared to place a simple germ mask on his face, which would in no way interfere with his breathing or his psychic functions, but would prevent one thing, blowing. Now what I have here is particles of a white plastic, which when given a good puff, good heavy puff of air, will, I think, rather conclusively show whether or not blowing is a method accomplished. Now, it will not, perhaps, in some way, differentiate between genuine psychic power and actual blowing, but it certainly should be very interesting indeed to see what now occurs. Well, do you maintain that if the page of the telephone directory turns, that we will see movement in the styrofoam as well? I think that it's pretty logical. We've experimented with it, Bob, and that's what we have determined in the experiments. Very well. Are you ready to proceed? I am indeed. Judges, you're ready? James? Ready. This time, how many, how many once, pages? Just one page. Once. It's time and once more. Now, James, you had another question. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is? What would you like okay. to ask? The styrofoam and the lights form electricity, which pulls the page. No. Pulls the page down. Of free in the pages. All right, and uh, what would you like to ask us to ask Randy to allow you to do or for me to do? To either take something else, either lighter or something that is going to keep, that isn't going to form like static electricity. You mean put something else, some other material around something here? Something that is not foam. Foam causes static electricity, and the light is what heats it up. All right, Randy, is there anything else that you can put around the telephone direct? I've heard the question, but the question is not valid because it's making an assumption which is not true. The foam does not in any way create static electricity, and Mr. Heydrich, in demonstrating that the pages were clinging together, didn't demonstrate it to my satisfaction. I think uh, we could perhaps ask the judges for their opinion on that. I am not a scientist, so I'm not qualified to declare on it. Judges? Whatever static electricity exists in the styrofoam would not really affect the movement of the page or the clinging of the pages together my opinion. I would, I would add that if this is in fact psychic functioning, I don't really see why that would make a difference. Very well. Randy, would you allow me to turn perhaps half a dozen pages and then put them back? Uh, oh yes, you may do that. Please. Yeah. James, I'll just lift up one, two. Lift them in a bunch if you would. Uh, uh, just take about a quarter of an inch. All right, there, yeah, like that. That's fine. Gently place them down gently so it doesn't disturb the phone. I know. Uh, well, oh, I thought you. Oh, the other way. Yeah, the other way. That's what I thought you meant. Would that 
Sure. It'd be helpful to you. The static is going to still be here because of the foam. See, that's well, it saying. is the opinion of the judges that there is not enough static formed by the, the foam to be a problem. So, uh, under the conditions agreed upon, it uh, would seem that now you should at least try with psychic power to turn the page of the telephone directory, James. Okay. Not only did Heydrich fail to perform with the styrofoam particles in place, but he refused altogether to use the face mask. Heydrich spent 90 minutes trying to move the page of the telephone book without success. It's not going to uh, turn for you? No, it isn't. Well, have you reached the point then when, uh, at, at which we can declare the demonstration terminated? This isn't a magician's trick. I can't just come up, bang, bang, and it's over. I have to be to where I can work with something small and then big, you know, to build up my own cell. So this well, is, you know, the, it isn't uh, a trick. It has to be done, you know, this is just, it's power. It's, it's mental power. The judges, do you have any further comment to make? You agree that you have not seen a psychic demonstration? Uh, yes, I, I would agree that I have not seen a psychic demonstration. Uh, I would like to say that as a parapsychologist, I believe that there are uh, other evidence under, under control conditions that do uh, demonst demonstrate, I would think, to a reasonable person that psychic phenomena do exist, yes. but uh, obviously not in this, in this uh, demonstration. I want to thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, James Heydrich.